Okay, so this is Pride Month, June. And so all of our picks are for this month are Pride, like LGBTQIA related. And I'm gonna start with one that I already finished. Oh yeah, you did. It see. was an ebook, and I was just, I just do it. I don't know why. I just like to start picking up ebooks when I have nothing else to do. So but, like, you do have stuff to do because you could be reading your physical books. I don't know if I had it with me at that time. Oh okay. And that's the, that's the thing. It's like if I don't have my book with me, which I really like to do, I just start choosing ebooks because I'm like, do I need it on Instagram? No. And that's kind of not. So I read Gorgeous Gruesome Faces, which came out in 2023. What's it called? Gorgeous Gruesome Faces. Okay. Came out November of 2023. And it was by Linda Chang. Uh -huh. And I read it on ebook. And it's like a Yellow Jackets meets She is a Haunting. And it's like a speculative thriller that follows a disgraced teen idol who comes face to face with the demons of her past in a glittering cutthroat k-pop competition Ugh. no anyways after a shocking scandal that abruptly ended her teen pop star career 18 year old sunny lee spends her days longing for her former life and cyber cyber stalking her ex bff and group mate candy the two are once inseparable but that was then before the tragedy and heartache they left in their wake in here in the here and now sunny is surprised to discover that candy is attending a new k-pop workshop in her hometown How's our hometown? Candy might be there chasing stardom, but Sunny can't resist the chance to join her and finally confront their traumatic history. Because she still can't figure out when, uh, what happened that horrible night when Mina, the third in their tight-knit trio, jumped to her death. Or if the dark and otherworldly secrets she and Candy were keeping had something to do with it. Anyways, I read this. I'll give my um, thoughts at the end of the month in our wrap-up. But I enjoyed it. Just so you know. So are you like into the K-pop thing now? K-pop books? We'll talk about it at the end of the month. It was just a question. It's like, what are you keeping secrets for? Like, cause they're, they, what's the other book you just read? XOXO. XOXO. Yeah. So are you like, is it like the tr season for you? A trend? Like what, what is it about? What is a trend? I mean, what do you, why would it be a trend? That's what I'm asking you. Who, who's this trend? That's what I'm asking you though. Cause suddenly it's K-pop this, K-pop that, and First it's all, like, I listen to. I know you music. do, but books. It just happens. It's to be spilled chill. over into your hobbies. I'm like, we're we're getting kind of crazy. Cause I'm like, the XOXO one. That's the one with the. That was a romance. Okay, what's this one again? Thriller. Yes, this is a thriller, a sapphic thriller. I did kind of like the sound of it. I don't want to read it, but I did like the sound of like the cyber stalker, and then uh, her jumping to her death. Like, cause then it's like. Maybe she didn't jump to her death. And that's what I'm feeling like. And that's what you'll see. I know. Oh, yeah, you did read it. So, like, yeah, fine. So, ugh, maybe just tell me off camera and I don't want to wait. <laughs> Why should you have to wait? A little act it? surprise when we do the wrap up oh, wow. or the book review. Okay, it's going gonna to be a wrap up. I'm not going to, it's not going to be one of my main reviews. Okay, so I'm going to start with my first book. And I'm sorry to say, but this one isn't Pride, but I got it. Where? Oh. My first book isn't for Pride Month. But I got it because I've been waiting for this book forever. It's I'm always on the wait list or I'll, every time I check, there's a wait for it. And it's such a popular book. And it's June. So I got seven days in June. Oh, that's why you got it. Yes. Well, then I was like, let me take this chance. Like, I don't want anyone else to, to get up on the list. So I was like, I, and that was the first one. So I was like, I'm getting it. I don't care. Um, seven days in June by Tia Williams. Very popular book. It's in Reese's. Um, it's a book club pick. Reese with this was a book club pick. I think I remember seeing that. Okay. Very, very popular by Teal Williams. Um, seven Days to Fall in Love, 15 Years to Forget, and Seven Days to Get to get It All Back Again. Eva Mercy is a single mom and, and best-selling erotic writer who is feeling pressed from all sides. Shane Hall is a reclusive, en enigmatic, um, award-winning novelist who, to everyone's surprise, shows up in New York. When Shane and Eva meet unexpectedly at a literary event, sparks fly, raising not only their buried traumas, but the eyebrows of the black liter literary? Literati? Literati? Liter I never heard that word. Literati. Literati? What? What no, one knows is that, what no one knows is that 15 years earlier, teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy torrid week madly in love. 
While they may be pretending not to know each other, they can't deny their chemistry or the fact that they've been secretly writing to each other in their books throughout the years. Aww. Right. Over the next seven, uh, seven days, amidst a steamy Brooklyn, Brooklyn summer, Eva and Shane reconnect, but Eva's wear, wary of the man who broke her heart and wants once I'm out of the city so her life can return to normal. Before Shane disappears, though, she needs a few questions answered. Um, I can't wait to read this. Me too. Everyone says they love this book. You can read it. I will give it to you. What? I've already got five books on the docket. Oh, please. Are, you don't have any more ebooks? Not at the moment. Okay, so then you have time for this one. You'll be reading like 10 books, so. Okay. So I'm excited because I haven't seen this one. I, I think since Black History Month, I've been trying to get this book. Yeah, and they've all, they've, they've been messing with us. They've been hijacking the system for this book, and I, I want, I wanted this. So what better month than June? Seven days in June. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So this is a, a book I already own, and I've already started reading it really enjoying it so far it's called iron widow the first in a duology by zirin j z is it zao z i should look this up anyways i'm gonna i'm gonna read what it's about okay pacific rim meets the handmaid's tale in this blend of chinese history and mecca science fiction for ya readers the boys of hooks Huxia dream of pairing up with girls to pilot chrysalis is giant transforming robots that can battle that mecha the mecha aliens that lurk beyond the great wall it doesn't matter that the girls often die from their mental strain when 18 year old zetian offers herself as a offers herself up as a concubine pilot it's to assassinate the ace male pilot responsible for her sister's death but she gets her vengeance in a way nobody expected she kills him through the psychic link between pilots and emerges from the cockpit unscathed I did. I did. I read mm -hmm, that part. Mm -hmm. She is labeled an Iron Widow, a much feared and much silenced kind of female pilot who can sacrifice sacrifice boys to power up Chrysalis instead. To tame her unnerving yet invaluable mental strength, she is paired up with Lee Shimin, the strongest and most controversial male pilot in Huixia. But now that Zetian has had a taste of power, she will not cower so easily. She will miss no opportunity to le to leverage their combined might and infamy to survive a temp after attempt on her life until she can figure out exactly why the pilot system works in its misogynist way and stop more girls from being sacrificed so this is a sci-fi fantasy lgbtqia i don't know what element i think it's maybe, i was just about to ask you i'm pretty sure it's like polyamorous and maybe is it non-binary or trans i don't know but i haven't read that to that part i'm only like 27 percent done but Okay. I'm enjoying it. I love a good female rage. There's also another book I have that's like a focus on like female rage. Um, it's like a, it's a black main character. So in this pile? No. Oh, it's okay. That I own. Oh, um, when you said Pacific Rim, I've never seen. I have, I've seen the movie. Okay. I believe. I'm. Uh, hopefully, that's the book that with the like these big. Ooh. transformer looking things that it take makes over sense because there is like yes yeah, so i was gonna actually i was like pacific rim because then i'm like now i can get into that world when they said that i am now if i read that i would imagine it as that type mm -hmm. of world because that it definitely look apocalyptic post-apocalyptic so th this is in the future by the way so mm, okay and they still got all this handmade sale crap and i'm like excuse you in the book yes so i, okay. I see what they mean by handmade sale though i have it's on my list to watch but i'm also scared because we're also in the handmade though basically so it's kind of like living reality so yeah reality okay well i mean you still watch it. i've never watched it either there's also books so i'm like hey when you tell books yeah it's, it's, so was the book forever right yes okay so it's i think to, it's book to show uh, i think maybe i've only seen the one with the show cover probably yeah elizabeth moth yes elizabeth moth yeah. mm -hmm. and also the second Lost. book comes out this year Oh my, these covers, when I tell you, these are some of the most prettiest covers I've ever seen. I like this. I like the little, like, I forgot, is it embossed or whatever, this silver, I like. I think so. It matches this. Uh, I think this iron. is her, I forgot what it's called. Her armor. I think it's her armor. It looks so cool. She's giving. The The next book, it's like this yellow look called, he it's Heavenly Tyrant. Oh my God. Okay, okay. 
she needs to, well, they they need to stop okay so my next book which i also started reading is blackout by angie thomas um tiffany jackson and a few other authors um this one's very popular too so you had a four on storygraph i don't know about goodreads and you recommended this book to me mm -hmm. wow, i really liked it because you liked it okay yes i saw that you rated a four um i'm already into a little bit um okay it says a summer heat wave blankets new york city in darkness but as the city is thrown into confusion a different kind of electricity sparks when the lights go out people reveal hidden troops love blossoms friendships transform and all possibilities take flight six beloved best-selling and award-winning authors oh and it's like six authors bring the glowing warmth and electricity of black teen love to an interconnected novel of charming hilarious and heartbreaking stories that shine a bright light through the darkness um i i believe i'm on part two of the first story mm -hmm. so it's like the first story then it's a new story then it's the part two yeah no because that's a thread the through line Sorry. so far i'm just gonna say something really quickly mm. i don't really care for the first story really i'm more i i like the second story way more like i'm that's why last night i was like ooh, 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 ooh. um so i'm like if there's a part three to their story i'm like okay well, you dragging it so i'll find i'll find out well but i told you it's the through line it's the what the through line story the through line yes the first story that starts is the story that continues throughout oh mm. i'm just not in invested i'm also yet. pretty sure that's tiffany d's story mm. oh gosh um tiffany <laughs> i'm just kidding not that it's a bad story i'm just more invested in that second one I like what it's about the two guys on the train oh yeah that was so cute ah i want that one so i feel like it would be so suffocating in a in a blackout all of it all of it is reminding me everybody gets crisp with the blackout episode <laughs> that's all i keep thinking about remember when um the old man pulled <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so that's blackout by a oh, bunch of authors the only two i know is tiffany d jackson and um angie thomas mm. but i'm into it do they say the author on the books no. i mean on the stories okay they don't so what else oh yes oh wait does. they do that's the off oh let's see who's the first story by i told you it, was it is mr sorry miss jackson <laughs> i was kidding you suck <laughs> whatever okay my next book on the docket dear wendy by ann zao so another zao mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and first of all i've always wanted to read this there's like a, a few books that are about like aromanticism or asexuality that i really want to read and this is one of them. There's another one by what's Oseman? Alice, Alice Oseman. Yes. Called Loveless. That's been on my list for like a year or two. Get to it, you I, know. Uh, what's been on your list? Loveless. The book. For a year or two. I've had Sorry, stop adding books. That's the problem. A year or two? Two, two years would be crazy. <laughs> no, there's still so many books I haven't. That's on my shelf that I still haven't gotten to in like years. That's what I'm. So, oh gosh. If I'm you, sorry. You I need have, to clear out your your TBR first, and then. But there's so many books that. And then you need a separate list of like for after you finish the TBR. But that's gonna be a long time because I don't get to that many books, compared to like how many is on my um shelf like my TBR. Mm. Six hundred fifty-two. Zaria. Well, does that, I wonder if that counts the one that's up next. You literally have to read two books a day to finish it in a year. I have a job. <sighs> I know. I don't even know why I said a year. It's not like you have to finish it in a year, but still. It stresses me out. And there's so many books that are just coming out and stuff. I know. There's this book called The Husbands. I gotta read that. It looks so good. That's, but did you recently add that one? Yeah. Yeah, read one that's before that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta read that. You say that about every book. Whatever. <laughs> She's calling me out. All right. So this came out this year. It's a contemporary YA novel. Um, Dear Wendy's Sophie and Joe, two aromantic and asexual students at West Well Wellesley, well, Wellesley mm -hmm. College, 
which I've heard of, engage in an online feud while unknowingly becoming friends in real life in this dual POV YA contemporary debut from Ann Zhao. Sophie Chi is in her first year at West Wellesley College. This is despite her parents' wishes that she attend a real university rather than a liberal arts school, and has long accepted her aromantic and asexual identities. Despite knowing she'll never fall in love, she enjoys running on Insta an Instagram account that offers relationship advice to students at Wellesley. No one except her roommate knows that she's behind the incredibly pop popular Dear Wendy account. When Joanna Jo Efron, also a first-year student at Wellesley, created their Sincerely Wanda account, it wasn't at all meant to be serious or take off like it does, not like Dear Wendy's. But now they might have a rivalry of sorts with Dear Wendy. Oops. <laughs> As if Joe's not busy enough having existential crisis, crises over gender. The fact that she'll never truly be loved or be enough or her few friends finding the one and forgetting her. Oh. Right? While tensions are rising online, Sophie and Joe are getting closer in real life, bonding over their shared arrow ace identities as their friendship develops and they work together to start a campus organization for other aspect students can their growing bond survive if they learn just who who's behind the wendy and wanda accounts so i oh yeah it, it does mention loveless uh-huh cute so i like that first of all this takes place in college i need more like college mm -hmm. centered books um then also like aspect identities we don't there, I feel like there's not many that I'm like interested in. Obviously, there's like a few that's on my list, but this is one of the ones I really wanted to read. Also, it's really I like this color. I do too. It's purple. I like the cover. It also matches my straw. You can't see the straw. Now you can. Okay. And I like that it's like about friendship. I need more books about friendship, bro. Especially since it is like a arrow arrow ace, so it's obviously not love, but like mm -hmm. platonic love. I think that we need more of that especially in a world so centered around romantic love yeah if you say so so my next book well i'm stick with the purple um Yay. is radio silence by alice oseman yeah she would um i don't remember what what happened but i was looking up some books and i saw this person Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's just pretty popular. I never heard of her. Heartstopper. I saw a Heartstopper on the back of like one of the little reviews on here. It's so cute. And it says it on here. So I picked it up and I might have added a few more books by Alice Oseman. I'm not sure. But also, first of all, I love the cover. Wait. It's just like graphic. I forgot who's this about. Is it the sister? Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Ow, it hit my leg. That's what I'm saying. Um, oh, you're ashy. Get away. <laughs> um. But the thing is, I I don't know if this is a new edition or something. Okay, so it says first published in 2016. And this one is the 2023. Okay, oh. the original cover is so ugly. It is! I hate it so much. It looks like a sci-fi type of book. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I hate it so bad. So, Wait, then you keep the graphic. And so I think when I was looking up the book on the library website, I was like, let me make sure I don't get the ugly cover. Thank you for changing it, whoever. Harper Teen, Epic Reads, I don't know. Whoever did it. Thank I you. Epic Reads. Okay. <laughs> Frances spends her time studying and, and making fan art for her favorite podcast, Universe City. Alid is known as a smart, quiet kid. No one realizes that he's the creator of Universe Oh, uh, the creator of Universe City and goes by the name Radio Silence Online. But when Frances gets a message from Radio Silence asking if she'll collaborate with them, everything changes. And the more Francis and Alex show their true selves on the podcast, the more they begin to wonder which is the real performance. When secret identities are revealed, will Francis have the courage to show the world who she really is? Or will she be met with radio silence? Francis. Francis and Alex. Alex. So I guess I'm a liar. Okay. Oh, this stunning hardcover edition also includes an exclusive letter from Alice Oseman. Where is it? Check. Okay. No, I don't know. Oh, maybe they're alive. Well, where is it at, though? That's a thick one. The library must have taken it out. I don't see no letter. Is this the letter? Yeah. Oh, this is cute. cute. What a day. This is a nice little sig. Okay, so yeah, I'm interested. Um, I can't remember the relation to LGBTQI. Um, I can't remember if it's the author. I don't want to say that because I don't know author or one of the characters but just no i did look it up i just can't remember okay mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I thought it was going to be about his sister, but whose sister? Not. The one of the main characters of Heartstopper. I thought it was what. Did you read Heart Heartstopper? No. Oh, okay. The show. Oh. The show. It's such a good show. Yes. By her. Y yeah. It oh. Was based off of her graphic novels. Oh, oh, I think I did see something about that, but I don't think I've added Heartstopper. Did you say heart stopper? Starper? <laughs> like, get out of here. You're just messing up. Aren't you? I'm a mess. You okay, go ahead. It's the heat. It's very cool in here. I don't know what's going <laughs> Shut on. Shut up. Okay, so this book I've been wanting to read for a while Just Your Local Bisexual Dis Disaster by Andrea Mas Mosqueda. Mm -hmm. I think Mosqueda, yeah. Mm hmm. And obviously it's about bisexuality and self-discovery. Okay. In this voice-driven debut YA novel, Maggie Gonzalez has, has to choose between three possible dates, her best friend, her ex-boyfriend, and the new girl in town to take to her sister's quinceanera. Growing up in Texas's Rio Grande va Valley, Maggie Gonzalez has a great family, a goofy group of friends, and, a, and dreams of being... I need to slow down and dreams of being a photographer but when she's tasked with picking an escort for her little sister's quinceanera Mag maggie has to face the truth that her feelings about her friends and her future aren't as simple as she as she'd once believed as maggie's search for the perfect escort continue continues she's forced to confront new and old feelings for three of her friends amanda her best friend and first ever crush matthew her ex-boyfriend twice twice over who refuses to stop flirting with her and Danny, the new girl who has romantic baggage of her own. As the weeks wind down and the boundaries between friendship and love become hazy, Maggie finds herself more and more confused and soon she must figure out how to avoid certain disaster or to be brave enough to dive right into it. Ugh, girl, go with the new girl. Get right. something new, funky and fresh. Right, something old, something new. Okay. Yeah, the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend. Like, Twice over. I didn't even know that. I don't think we need him. Mm -mm. Right. Because he obviously won't catch a hint. You were ex for a reason. Right. Twice. Best friend. That, that can get a little messy. But new girl? Exactly. Also, based on the cover, she does look like a disaster. Right. Got her little messed up kicks. A like, bean. Like ice cream. Right. And it looks hot as hell. Why are you covering up your head like that? Um, Got her little flannel. Did you the show Texas the cover? Heat. It's a glare, but whatever, I guess. Thanks. Um, yeah, but I love that the colors. I do too. I do love the sunset covers. Yeah. So can't wait to read this. I'm pretty sure I'll be. Ha yeah, this is gonna be the third book review. The crazy thing is, it's like in real life, it would just been like, just oh, don't stop. go with either one of them. Just go by yourself honestly or yeah. take your best friend because it's the, but the, but because she has a crush then it makes it more complicated but i mean you had a crush on her before the quinceanera so just take her and act like you don't have a crush on her right just be friends yeah it's not that serious um okay my next book the romantic agenda by claire can i want to say can i saw that she has a bunch of books out i did not know this oh yes yeah? um i was interested in a few I didn't really like the covers, so that kind of was like drawing me away, but I was still interested in some of the synopses. I do. Okay, so the romantic agenda. <coughs> Joy is in love with Malcolm. Malcolm wants to date Summer. Summer is in love with love. And Fox is Summer's ex-boyfriend. That's messy as hell. Right? 30, flirty, and asexual. Joy is secretly in love with her best friend, Malcolm, but she's never been brave enough to say so. When he unexpectedly announces that he's met the love of his life, and no, it's not Joy, she's heartbroken. Malcolm invites her on a weekend getaway, and Joy decides it's her last chance to show him exactly what he's overlooking. But maybe Joy is the one missing something, or someone, and his name is Fox. Um, Fox sees a kindred spirit in Joy and decides to help her. He proposes they pretend to fall for each other on the weekend trip to make Malcolm jealous. But spending time with Fox shows Joy what it's like to not, to not be the third wheel, and there's no mistake in the way he makes her feel. Could Fox be the romantic partner she's always deserved? Girl, first of all, why are you trying to snatch this man away from a girl? Well, because it says Malcolm wants to date Summer. Oh, so, they're not together. Not fully. Sir. I don't think so. Touch him with that. Um, I don't think so yet. Oh. 
I'm interested because I don't like love triangles. Girls like but a lot. it's not really. Yeah, like a square, whatever. It's like smushy. Um, but I just feel like Joy and Fox are in up together, so I love that. The thing is, too, it's like if he if wants to be with someone else, let it go. Right. It's like sometimes it's okay to just be friends. It seems like I don't. I mean, I never read. This is all the context I have, but Fox is a good man. What? <laughs> He's so annoying. Okay. Okay. I'm excited to read that. Okay, this is The Unfortunate by J.K. Chikwu. It came out last year in February, so a year ago. And I've been trying to read it ever since. Like, I'm pretty sure I like it was been on my list. That's what I do. But okay, so this is a literary LGBTQIA novel. And it's an edgy, bitingly funny debut, we'll see, about a queer half Nigerian college sophomore who, enraged and exhausted by the racism at her elite college, is, deter is determined to reveal the truth about the unfortunates, the unlucky subset of black undergrads who just keep disappearing. <gasps> is that a real guess? <laughs> yes. Okay. Sahara is not okay. Entering her sophomore year, she already feels like a, a failure. Her body is too much. Her love life is non-existent. She's not Nigerian enough for her family. Her grades are subpar and well, the few black classmates she has are vanishing or dying. Sahara herself is close to giving up. Depression has been her lifelong, her longtime life partner. She believes that this narrative, taking the form of an, form of an irreverent, no holds barred thesis addressed, addressed to the powerful university committee that will judge her Maybe her last chance to document the unfortunate experience before she joins their ranks. But maybe, just maybe, she and her complex community of BIPOC women aren't ready to go out without a fight. BIPOC? By POC? The BIPOC did throw People out. say that. Okay, but when I say POV, you get mad at me. Because that's no one says that. Someone does. I don't know who that someone is, but they need to stop too. No. <sighs> Whatever. I really, really like this cover. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't know it's gonna be. I didn't, didn't know it's gonna be like a LGBTQ. I mean, uh, literary. Maybe. Oh, I was like, I didn't know it was gonna be a literary novel, but maybe this will be the literary novel that gets me. I was intrigued when I heard the the kids were missing. The kids are not okay. Also, it's only three hundred and one pages. I can tell it's small. Yeah, it's a it's a little it's a little thin bit. Maybe we can trade these at the end of the month. <laughs> what anyways first of all also she has part of the thesis on here and i'm like i want to read this what does that mean what thesis the thesis i didn't I literally oh. said <laughs> she's gonna address this to the committee you're so oh funny. i was like what are you talking about to this i really like that uh, yeah cover okay so my last book is a dream so dark by ll mckinney um i've done the review of a blade so black i loved it um it was like the retelling black retelling of alice in wonderland um i don't like this cover though oh yeah i don't i just don't like covers like this especially because it's like graphic which mixed with like an image i mean like um what's it called when it's the person oh i'm so sorry i'm all over the place i'm a disaster um like the graphic mixed with like the realistic image oh i just cgi oh girl <laughs> it's just like throw me off okay so um okay still really from her recent battle and grounded until she graduates high school <laughs> rightfully so alice must cross the veil to rescue her friends and stop the black knight once and for all but the further she ventures into wonderland the more topsy-turvy everything becomes it's not until she's at her wit's end that she realizes Wonderland is trying to save her. There's a new player on the board. Someone capable of using nightmare creatures to not only influence the living, but raise the dead. Ooh, Ooh. necromancy. Dreams have never been so dark in Wonderland. And if there's any hope, Alice must confront the worst in herself and in the people she loves and face the very nature of fear. 
Um, I love that she's grounded, even though I don't. I think they're gonna throw that all out the window in this book because it does not matter. This girl does not care. <laughs> she will think she's the one to save the world, and she will forget about her mom for days on end. Let me see her grades. I don't even know what she be doing in school. Like she, it's like school is the background. School is in the background. It does not matter. I'm like Euphoria or Glee. No, literally, school does not matter in this book. She's literally in high school, and it does not matter. Um. So yeah, I can't wait. This is like this is probably the quickest I've gotten to a second book. Right, I'm so bad at that. I know that's how I was like, let me just get it because it did on um story graph because I was going through my books for this month and it said LGBTQI on it. So I was just like, I don't remember in the Literally first just one. Click on it. No, no, click on what? Oh, go ahead. I don't remember what a aspect in the first one that pertained to um so that's why i didn't think about it when i was going through my books but then i saw it on this one and so i'm like maybe i'm i just can't remember or maybe it's so someone new in this book so oh wait maybe i do remember um but yeah i can't wait because i did enjoy the first one i did and there's like a little love triangle but at the same time uh one of the love interests which at least i believe that his lunch love interest is like in danger so he shouldn't be a love interest no more he's as good as dead am i right i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. well kind of okay <laughs> bathhouse by pj vernon and it's a thriller i can tell oh yeah okay so this is a contemporary thriller uh, which follows a young gay man in a perfect marriage who will do anything to keep a dangerous indiscretion from his loving husband mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so for oliver park a young recovering addict from indiana finally has everything he ever wanted sobriety and a loving wealthy partner in nathan a prominent dc trauma surgeon mm -hmm. despite their difference in age and disparate backgrounds they've made a perfect little a perfect life together with every to lose everything to lose oliver shouldn't be visiting house a gay bathhouse but through the entrance he goes and it's a lot and it's a line crossed inside he follows a man into a private room and it's the final line whatever happens next nathan can never know but then everything goes wrong terribly wrong and oliver barely escapes with his life he breaks his home in a full-blown terror as the handshake bruise grows dark on his neck the truth will destroy nathan and everything they have together so oliver does the thing he used to do so well he lies what follows is a classic runaway train narrative full of the exquisite escalations edge of your seat thrills and oh my god twist oh <laughs> <laughs> i was on the edge of my seat and then you were just like um Good. okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm so i like i'm kind of interested but cheating annoys me i know so much I know, but I think the thriller aspect will like keep me interested mm -hmm. because. Uh, go ahead. No. Go ahead. Because I think I'm wrong. No, I was gonna say maybe it's like an erotic thriller. Erotic thriller. I feel like it's not. Because it took a turn, like a terrible turn. Hey, I'm interested. Why I'm wrong? Huh? That's why I said I'm wrong. What is that on the back? It said too many words. What is, is this? It's like Cornell notes. Oh my god! It does look like that. It's just, oh, I hate that. And it's the reviews, right? Yeah, from my Oh, course. they should have kept it to the minimum. Hey, I read the swap. I liked it. Um, I'm interested, like because. Why does it feel heavy though? Hold it. It does. Feel mine. Right, this is light. Exactly. And it looks thicker because it's only 310 pages. Oh. It's the weight of all the lies. Um, that part. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I'm interested. If you're not, it's, it's fine. No, I know, but like, because if I am, I would add it to my TBR. But I'm trying to, like, I'm on the, on the cusp. Because I wonder what happened in that room. But then the fact that he was going to bruise, I know. But what, what made that happen? Was the guy? Oh, I wanted the, the guy was straight. Because you know, how, remember, in like, um, oh my gosh, in nine one one. The dispatcher guy 
Oh yeah. He was a day and then he wasn't even uh, that pissed me off. He was actually straight and he beat him up. So I was like, what if it's like that type of thing? Mm. Or if he, it's he actually straight and he's just like crazy. I was just like, what? What happened in the room? But then it's like spiraling with the lies. What? We love a good spiral. <laughs> okay. Whatever. So this month I tried to get a nice little range and I think I did that. Me too. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, but most of these we don't even know what the elements are. Uh huh. This one. Sexuality, I know. I, I can't. I just can't remember radio silence and then blackout. We do know. Yeah, there's a gay character. Two gay characters. Dream so dark. I believe it's one of the characters that was in the first book is gay. I believe so. And then Seven Days in June is no I, aspect. I just wanted June. Yeah. Well, no, it's not that anybody being. Well, it does match the month, but also. I took my chance. I understand. I understand. But yeah, that's our haul or TBR list for this month. And we're going to have some reviews coming up soon. And thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below if you've read any of these books. And probably this one people have read. Probably. That's one of like probably the most popular in this pile. And or let us know what other books you're reading for Pride Month this month. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye.